us in prayer today. Yes, great Saint Father, we thank this day you've given to us, Lord, and thank you for all your many blessings that you've given us, Lord. Lord, do you pray to just be with us here today, Lord, that we just always uh, look for you for guidance and decisions we made, Lord. We ask all these things in our dearest precious name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Call the meeting to order. We have a motion to approve the claims. Motion. Second. All in favor. <coughs> Mr. Exe, you're first on the list this morning. <coughs> okay, just stand right here. Wherever. Okay. Wherever you feel comfortable. <coughs> um, thank you for your time. I'm here to discuss my position at District 2. For the last several years, I've been a supervisor here. Kenneth Cocker was one of my employees. Now he is my commissioner. I know when he got elected, this will be a learning curve for both of us. I've worked like every other employee since November of 2018 when you guys took over. Kenneth and I have never discussed supervisor position, and I don't think he wants to discuss anything with me. This is the problem. Monday, Kenneth brought it to my attention that he was not pleased with my work performance. He was very heated and explained to me that I could be transferred, etc. So I finished out today, talked with the administrator, and took a few days off to let things settle down. I've worked for the county a long time. I worked hard to achieve the supervisor position. I don't feel like it's fair to be demoted because Kenneth got elected commissioner. We need help to come to a solution. That's all. Thank you. I think the way you look, you looked it up. Yeah, my understanding is that in 2015, Eddie Berg raised XC's pay rate to be what was considered foreman pay at that time, seven fifty one an hour. And um, so, from that point forward, the understanding between the two of them was that XC is supervisor. Now, whether or not that understanding goes, you know, before. That I don't know, but that's what I have the paper record of as far as when that pay rate officially changed. Um, and then uh, as soon as Kenneth took office, he wanted to bring David into a position of supervisor, and he did the same thing. Well, no, I just bring them the same pay. Yes, brought the pay and rate to 1751. Like so, what um, was it voted on where he was ever put forward? It has not been voted on for either of them, that, the word. So, so he's, legally, he's legally under Eddie never was born. Uh, I, I don't know how, I don't know if it's just a pay rate thing or if it, if it, the word has to be in the minutes or what, what that supervisor agreement consists of. And far as him going being our foreman, me and David was there since 2015 and Eddie never told us that you were our foreman. We never knew it. He never made it public. Never. We never knew it. So, and your job performance, see, you got wrote up last year. You called, you said F you to me. And, and this law here, it says I could have fired you then, but I didn't. Okay? There was an incident about a slag issue. You and Tanner went to Vulcan and, and got slag, and I told you not to overload the truck. And I told you to get off the scales and go dump it. Where did you dump the load at? In Bill Campbell, at somebody else's house. Yeah, I got problems with your work ethics. There's another time, just like the other day, uh, when, I, when you're working on equipment at the shop, and it takes all day to change an oil filter. There's something wrong with that. I'm putting out plant mix. See, I've not told you, I've told all three of them. There's nothing that they can do or will do or haven't done or anything that I haven't already done. You can't fool me on any of this stuff. I know what it takes to get a job done. So, as far as you, we're discussing being foreman, 
as far as in my eyes, you've never been fooled into us because it never was voted on, it never was made public. Eddie never told us you were our foreman. Never. So, where we're at right now, my understanding is you've got two hands that you're paying foreman pay, and neither one of them has never been voted to be a foreman. Is that right? I mean, there's no paper trail of it. Just the pay rate has been voted on. Just the pay rate has been voted on. Nobody has been officially named a foreman, supervisor, whatever you want to call it, according to the paperwork that Kaylin and I have found. <clears throat> and we'll go back to job performance. Just like the yellow vest and stuff you're supposed to wear. You don't want to wear them. You don't want to drive a dump truck. You don't want to put out plant mix. You don't want to go on patch. That's what we do. I don't know how to please you. I was elected to serve the people in District 2 and open these roads up. And I told all three of y'all, whether it Ted or not, I don't know if he was there or not, I said, I'm going to open the roads up. I don't care if it's gravel, pavement. I don't care who lives on it. I don't care what color skin they are. I don't care if they're rich, poor. I don't care what their last name is. I said I was going to open the roads up. Did I not tell y'all three of y'all that? I said I'm going to open these roads up regardless who lives on them, regardless of pavement, I don't care if it's gravel, if it's a county road, I'm going to take care of it. And that's what I've been doing. So, but somebody going to work for me, we work eight hours a day. You don't take a vehicle home, you don't stay two hours for dinner, stuff like that I got a problem with. And I told you, seven hours, I expect at least six and a half, seven hours of work. And I told all three of this. I don't leave them out. I don't hide around and beat around the bush. I mean what I say. You're going to either work or you're not going to work for me. It's that simple. Have I not told all three of y'all that? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I'm not pointing one single person out when I say this. So... <clears throat> But I do get aggravated when I see the work is not being done. Because the people out there pay taxes, they expect us to do it. It's their money we're spending. It's their money the equipment tires up. It's their money. It's not our money. And I was elected to do this job, and I'm going to do it. I don't care who will make mad doing it. We're going to get the job done. That's the way I feel about it. You make anything to say, they can say it. Yes, I have something to say. When you took over and you saw that my pay was so much different than everyone else's, did you check to see why? No. They said you was foreman. Like I said, Eddie never told us you was foreman. You was never voted on to be foreman. Well, then, when you accepted the position of commissioner after you got elected by the people, did you accept everything as it was as far as when you inherited, you inherited everything, correct? I inherited a mess. I inherited no shop, no gravel pit, no equipment. The roads all gone, grown up. I've got shop. I've got starting equipment, and I'm getting the roads open back up. I change things. I don't leave them like they were. If I don't like the way they are, I change them. That's the position I got when I got elected. So basically, what you're saying is you changed me and everything else. I didn't even consider you as foreman. You never, like I said, Eddie never told me and David you were our Well, friend. what I'm asking is, when you saw the pay raise difference, you didn't accept it. Now, what it was? I actually wanted to drop your pay, but by law, I can't do it. Why is that, sir? Because, like I said, you never considered my foreman. I think a foreman ought to get the pay. Don't you think that would be a question for If Eddie, Eddie would have used foreman, why didn't he vote on it in a public meeting? Why didn't he tell me and David? Why didn't he tell the, the people out there? in the district that you was our foreman. Why, why was that ever discussed? If you want to be discussed about stuff, why was it that ever discussed? I mean, I can't answer for Eddie. You never told us you was our foreman. I never you felt You never said I never that, felt hey, like I'm I, your foreman. I never felt like I had to. Um, How do we know that you were our foreman? We didn't know that you was getting extra pay that David heard about a couple years into it that Eddie was paying him more money. We didn't even know it. We had no idea. I mean, I think that's a question for Eddie and not for me, sir. Um, well, I mean, you're bringing this up to me like I should know when we did not know that you was our foreman. But I would like to say, I mean, if you would 
But either way, I mean, I can change you being foreman. Yes, sir, I understand that. I don't want you as my foreman. I understand. Is that clear enough? Yes, sir, I understand. I picked David as my foreman. For a year, I have tried to make my mind up on who do I need to be foreman. So that's where I'm going to go, and I'm not hiding it right here. I understand that, sir. I I understand you are the commissioner, and what you say goes. um, But I was just asking if you understood the way things were set up when you took over. I told you, we did not know that you were our foreman. Eddie never told us, never told anybody. It never was put in the paper. Your pay raise was never in the paper. It was a hidden secret that nobody knew about. But you do acknowledge it. After I got elected. Yes, that's what I'm I asking. seen your pay seven, raise. Seven after you got I always wanna know why you were making more money. That's, that's all I'm asking. What's that got to do with anything? I never said you was my foreman. I never recognized you as my foreman. I never well, recognized it's, it. It's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty much the same thing, Kenneth. Eddie done the same thing pretty much as what you've done with David. No, he you wasn't my foreman. I just raised up the same pay he was making. When did you yeah. raise the pay? You raised David's pay to foreman's pay. But it was in the paper. I put it in the paper. I didn't hide it. Yep, yeah. but you hadn't named nobody as a foreman. What, what, I got it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I didn't need, think I needed no foreman. I'm making all the decisions at District 2. And so did Eddie, sir. No. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie worked just the same as you. He'd come in every morning. To give us out what job duty he wanted us now, to do. Now, there's a big difference between me and him. I work. Okay. He gave us what he wanted us to do. And then I made sure that it got done. If you, it got done. That's what he says. So you're taking credit for all this mess, all this grown up trees, and all these roads washed away, and all these covers. I'll take absolute credit because that's what well, you that's what Mr. Burton that that's, that's what Mr. Eddie Burton wanted done, and that's what we done. What he's saying, Kenneth, is, is he done what? his commissioner at the time told him to do how things got is was out of his control if eddie wasn't telling him to well, do we it. Were to, man, i mean that's working on the same man and this commissioner never told us that he was our foreman what were we supposed to do well <laughs> i mean in the same sense you can have to take as much credit for it being grown up and all as he does no he was, our foreman. He, supposed to, he was supposed to be our foreman and Eddie was our commissioner. I mean, you didn't know he was your foreman. It's what you just said. I did not know he was my foreman. Well, as I, <laughs> as I stated, um, I knew that this would be this way when, I, when Kenneth got elected. I mean, I understood that we'd have this to go through at some point. You made it. Just, si- just simply because you was my employee and now you're my boss. So here we are. I knew this was coming. <clears throat> I won't, I'll, I'll try to say this briefly. I see what Tim's trying to say, but uh, legally, I think what Kenneth said, they never knew it, they never knew the pay raise and whatever. And then he says he raised him <coughs> to the form and pay. He did, and we voted on it and let him. And, and he did raise him, but he then Kenneth said, if, if you listen, when he first started, he was able to try it for a year and then appoint him a form. So I, I think what it boils down to is, uh, who kind of wants to be his foreman and uh, let him pick his foreman if that's legally, if you can do that. And I don't see why you can't. We all have a foreman. And, uh, every I don't, of, but that's, that's, every, that's every commissioner's opinion. Right. I think you'll be putting me in a compromised position, taking both of my employees and putting them over me. There's only been a matter of time before I'll be rolled up and out. I mean, it's simple. No, you're going to do it to yourself. I mean, you do it to yourself. When your work performance don't do the job that you're supposed to do, you do it to yourself. Sir, there's no I way. I don't treat any of y'all no different. Sir, there's no way to judge how you grade my work performance. Your judgment would be totally different from Tim's or Dale's or Keith's. I mean, that's just coming I done told you, I've been working longer than you have with the county. I know what it takes to get a job done. If, if you're not doing the job satisfactorily, if you're not doing the job, is it not my responsibility to call you out on it? Sir, I've been there 18 years. I've never had a write-up or a complaint from any other boss. I've had because two, all you done is ride around and pick up. I had two commissioners you before, never before you, and now that we're here and you're my boss, all of a sudden I'm a bad hand. No, you're just not the foreman. You might as well get that title out of your head because you're not my foreman. I understand. I don't know how clear I can make it. I had no foreman for last year. I don't hide it. I'm, I'm we're in a public meeting. I'm talking about it. Your last boss you had didn't do this. It wouldn't be this problem right now. You may have to check your paperwork, sir. She did check the paperwork. Maybe she's not found it. 
She's not found it just like the write up that I had you wrote up a year ago. So I'm L, you said F U. So I'm responsible for it coming up. No, two, sir. No. But our former administrator did not file it, put it in your files. But Scott Hunt, I told him to get it back and put it in your files. That's where it needs to be. I told him to put it there. I mean, it was supposed to have been there. And you told Caitlin last Friday that I changed my mind, I guess, that I did not want it in a file. I did not change my mind. Sir, I don't know what you've done. Well, the problem is you've got to work now. You didn't have to work before. That's the problem. I mean... We're going to work. That's that simple. I don't know how to clear it. I don't know how else to make it. We're going to work in District 2. Well, if nobody wants to work there, they can go and leave. I don't at, at this point in the meeting in time, uh, Kenneth, at some point, you've got to appoint you a foreman. If I you just found a one. foreman. Uh, David Bowen. The, the biggest thing that's well, got to be one. done just like with me, my employees, the sheriff and his deputies, everybody's got to get along and work together. I agree. But you're going to have an employee that won't work and just goes home and does what he wants to and not say anything about it? I won't do that. I never will do that. As far as what you want to accomplish today, you want to just go ahead and appoint a foreman today, then you can make that motion and y'all can vote and we can go on unless there's more that you want to He can't accomplish. do that today, it's not on the agenda. Okay. Put it on the next agenda. Okay. All right, we're gonna be moving on. Thank you gentlemen for Tight well, Mr. Bobby. Next thing on the agenda for today is uh, to move uh, next me next week's meeting to the Tuesday because next Monday's a holiday. Hello, oh, Mr. Bob. Do we have a motion to move uh, February 17th holiday to Tuesday, February the 18th? Which will be next Tuesday. <coughs> no make motion. Second. Second. All in favor? <coughs> At, uh, <coughs> next thing is to pay for the industrial park soil test out uh, out of the jail fund, which is nine hundred dollars. We had a soil test done out on the site before hopefully one day we'll get to build this new jail and I, as far as I know everything, I hadn't talked to them, but everything come back good then, Keith. That, yes, that's my understanding from what Mike Chow told me. Yes, sir, I've got the papers on it. It all, uh, it all done good. There's uh, two lots there. We tested both of them, dug on both of them, I think six or eight holes. And uh, they came to, I think Terron's the name of it. And uh, they done it, and so both lots was good. I think there was 7.3 and 5 point something acres, and uh, they said that it did test good. And I think they they gave us a pretty good deal on it because they quoted us $1,500. Uh, and the guy, Mike, Mr. Mike, knew him, and uh, he gave us some uh, pointers over there, and he got out of there and took it with him, and uh, he he cut us nearly in half of what he originally said it would be so I think we got a good deal on that. We got the paperwork on it and it's, it's ready to go. So uh, do we have a motion to pay this bill? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Additional <laughs> three part time employees. Mr. Dale. I got uh, two part time that I've been using, and they're not going to be able to <coughs> work part time for me this time. And I need to replace those two people. But I, I think it's my understanding since we're going with this temp service that we just uh, take out here. Yeah, I don't think we have to vote 
he is wanting to run it through the county and keep them at under 20 hours a week. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. My bad. Didn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as running through the temp service, uh, we just take applications and that's right. Each, well, each department head can hire who they want that way. Right. The council, yes. or the he wants to keep them at less hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. They will uh, be working over 20 hours a week. Okay. Which means that we don't have obligation to pay for their health yeah. insurance and retirement match and things like that. So we won't really need to vote on this until he finds him some. I think we're voting to allow him to accept Except applications. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We have a motion by Dale to accept applications for part-time employees for his district under 20 hours be through the county. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, next be for you Mr. Sheriff <laughs> now the sheriff has lost one of his deputies he's been yeah. gone for how long has he been gone Chris uh, five months. about five months he has not replaced him until he until he's just found someone a post certified ready to take the position so we're hiring or voting to hire him Tyler yeah, Norton two hurt two out I got two out that's injured <laughs> kind of like I've got, handed, but, uh, I've got one having surgery tomorrow, so he's going to be out for about six weeks, so it's just going to be me and one more. <laughs> All right, so what we have is a uh, hire Tyler Norton, Norton, Norton as a deputy with a base pay rate of sixteen twenty three per hour and a uniform rate of a dollar forty four per hour. Correct. Do we have a? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Have anything to say? Can well, I appreciate it. I mean, Tyler is a uh, well experienced officer now. He's 25 years old, young man. He's originally from Hackberg and uh, I hired him away from Muscle Shoulders PD. He wanted to get back home. So I'm glad to have him aboard the Sheriff's Department. This day and time, it's hard to find somebody that's uncertified. Very hard. That's why it's took me about five months to get the right one. All right, uh, next we have a, to adopt a resolution to participate in the statewide county liability insurance fund. Uh, this is something we're already in through ACCA. It's just, uh, every, I think it's every three years we have to opt to stay in. Just to upgrade or update on the paperwork, actually, is what it is. So, do we have a motion to continue with the? I'll aid? make a motion to continue. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Next, I guess you're Trice and Bobo. <laughs> you're the only one here I didn't know. <laughs> I'm here with the Liberty Learning Foundation. We are a nonprofit 501c3 out of Huntsville. And what we're doing is providing a civics based education program for elementary students. We are now um, serving 46 counties, about 50,000 students throughout the state. And we are excited that Marion County is one of our last counties to come on board with us. Um, the kids are involved in a second grade program here, so that's about 325 approximately students out of representing all of the, the county schools. And um, it has a lot of moving parts. It's really, it's, it's a fun, engaging program. They're learning, learning a lot of lessons on civics, um, character building. We do a financial literacy component. We're teaching them about careers at a very young age. We feel like we need to start them young. But we want them to understand and have a knowledge of the importance of their title as a citizen. We feel like civics is something that is not taught like it was when we went to school. It's not necessarily in the curriculum, but yet they have to pass it in the graduation exam upon graduating as a senior. So we're bringing it to them in a fun way. We've already had their kickoff here. That was last Tuesday. They came together at the Hamilton elementary gym we bust all the kids in so they'll be at one place and as you can see in the brochure the first thing we do is a kickoff and that's where we bring in our first um, 
person on stage, Libby. She is dressed in green as Statue of Liberty. And she tells them fun facts about herself, where she came from, how she was created, um, the gift from France, all the things that um, we feel is important that they may not hear if we don't teach them in some fun way that they can remember. So this is their kickoff. Um, they go back into their classrooms, and we have provided all the materials and resources that their teachers teach them with. So I am out in the community, and of course we have other uh, regional and state sponsors that provide this program. So without that, we would not have the materials and resources. But we are actually giving those teachers um, all the things that they need for a 10 to 12 weeks of lessons. Um, it'll be voting, it'll be immigration, It'll be the military and veterans. Um, all of these things about our American history and what we're about, and uh, we're teaching that with a lot of character. We want them to be not only a good student, but a good person, so therefore, ultimately, when they're in the workforce, they'll be a good employee. Um, we will culminate this program here um, after the, the 12 weeks of lessons on May the 1st. It'll be 9 o'clock at the same gym. I would love for any of you to come and participate. They will not only graduate and take an oath as a super citizen, but they will actually have um, teamed up with uh, their classmates and they have honored somebody as a local hero. They picked somebody within the community that they feel has given back in a positive way and they bring that person up on stage, talk about them with a little bi biograph and then give them a little, little bell pen that's in the shape of Statue of Liberty. So the entire thing is themed around the Statue of Liberty. Um, we feel that it's very crucial lessons at this time, and we hope that you guys will, will support us. Um, not only do we need financial support, but we also just need networking. I need to be in the community finding others that can join in our alliance of sponsors to keep the program going. Um, and as you see in the brochure, this is a second grade program, a fifth grade program, and this year we are launching the junior high program. So when funding is available in each county and each area, we will be expanding into all the levels. But as of now, we're in the second grade. So I just want to make you aware of that. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer it. Um, if you know any teachers in the second grade at any of the schools, please you know, feel free to ask them about it. Is the Board of Education on board with this? Yes. They endorse this? Yes. We always have to start with the superintendent and then work our way down. Of course, the principals have to be behind it, and then we for sure want the teachers to be involved with it because they do have to do the teaching. Um, we have made it very easy for them. It's all in notebooks. They have um, Scholastic America books that follow along with the lessons. And we can even coordinate volunteers. We can have somebody come in from the community and do the lesson of the week. So they, they can do the lessons at their discretion when they feel that it's time to interject the civics. And it does go along with the Alabama Course of Study. So yes, we are definitely um, in with the the state legislators, uh, they're behind this. Um, of course, the governor's working on the workforce development in all the communities, so this is something that they're behind. So we really believe that what we're doing is going to serve a purpose. <coughs> is uh, Winfield City Schools involved in it too? Winfield City is not in it, not yet. No, we, um, we like to get both systems if we can, um, but we really just start with where we're asked to be first. And um, I have been working with Northwest RCND Council and uh, Mr. Barnwell had actually even said to me that he thought the county would, would like this. So we approached them and they were ready for it to come and here we are. Okay. So, and we've been around since 2009. So this has been developed and, and put across the state since um, the school year of 12-13. So we've been around for a while. And uh, we're strategically placed with two events team. We actually have two Libby's. We have educators that are former principals and teachers that's put together you know, the programs that they go teach the teachers. And then, of course, there's uh, fund development and str strategic areas of where we live within two hours. It was a two-hour drop for me. <laughs> so that's how we go about getting our funding for the program. Okay. And it's $36 a student. So with 325 students over here, that's roughly almost $12,000. And again, I'm, I'm working with others, um, you know, the local banks, um, the pharmacy, the Walmart, any kind of community sponsor that we can find. I think that's good for the kids to see up on our screens that we've had some community sponsorship to keep the program going. So, thank so you so much. Total cost of twelve thousand. Roughly. For what I want you to, I want you. you know, the Board of Education and your people that's behind this book back. The Board of Education. Well, we don't ask for anything from the school system because we feel like their time is what they're giving. Um, <coughs> one percent of the funds that I find goes strictly to the materials and resources. 
we actually have a seat donor that takes care of all of our overhead. So the school does not have to put in any money. It's free to the schools. And if you know your state legislator, um, they, they know about us, and, and if you want to ask questions through them, they'd like to support us as well. All right. Anything else? You said we're the last. We in 66 counties just got this. And we're in 46 right now. Um, we started with just a few, and then we had a big seed down from Alabama Power come in and want us across the state. So we did that in school year 13, 12, 13, and we went from 13,000 students to 42,000 quickly. There, every school system was asking for us, and then we just realized we had to figure out how to get the funding. So now we we make a point to get into the community first and find some funding, and then um, we just expand as we can. We've just grown and grown until we're up to 46 counties and and growing. We would love to be in all the counties, but until we can find funding there, we can't, you know, get to So if it could start today, when would it next school semester? It's already here. It's already, already started. started. Yeah, we kicked off last Tuesday, and then they'll go for their lessons. It's it's a 10 to 12 week program. We let them kind of pick, you know, what's good for them. So if they have to dodge spring break or if they start in the first semester, you know, Thanksgiving, those kind of things, then we let them pick what week is good for us to come back. So we're going to finish the program here May 1st. Well, as much as I think this sounds good to be a former educator and not having civics anymore like I did when we were in school, more likely, how much are you expecting from, or, uh, you know, but this in the year without budgeting this, uh, uh, like we need to have a figure and know if we can look at our budget, see if we possibly right. have any. Uh, well, a classroom roughly is $900 to 1000 and um, if there's 25 kids in there, it's roughly $36 per student. So, of course, you know, typically a school would be $5,000, and all the schools in the county are participating. Y'all have to come up with names that's brilliant and yeah. Sullivan and Gwen and no, yeah. no, there's what five y'all schools, but there's roughly 325 students, so um, that many of <coughs> them um, uh, are participating, and we actually allow them to take field trip. They bus in to, to the gym. We, we pick a common venue, so Hamilton was evidently centrally located, and that's how we picked here. And um, but they learn their lessons back in the classrooms. And we, you know, we we feel that the support that we get is an investment into the community because this is for all of the second graders. Uh, we're not selecting any particular group. Um, and if we can be back in a couple of years and get the fifth grade program started, of course, with funding, then we'll have a second and fifth grade program going. So then you're basically doubling the cost that it's going to take to get it uh, in both grades. Tricia, you have already secured some community funding yes. in this area. Yes. So um, she's not asking for us to fund oh, this no, program. No. This, she's already secured some funding. We have regional and state sponsors. Blue Cross Blue Shield helps us throughout the state. Alpha helps us throughout the state. Um, we have a small portion of the Education Trust Fund. Um, we are heavily working with the Northwest RCMD Council. They've helped us. Um, I have actually been to the community college and left information there. I've not actually spoke with someone, but that's my job to be in the community. And that's why sometimes I like to start a commission because you guys know people that might can lead me to others here. Um, so you're not here asking for county funds for much. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, not in, but not in entirety. That's what she's trying to say. Is I do have other sponsors. She's not asking us <laughs> yes. for $12,000. No. That's what I'm trying but if you want to give me $12,000, I'll have a big purse. <laughs> I just want you to understand that not only do we love your support financially, but it's just the ability to bring this to you and say we are in your community. We want you to be aware of what we're doing in case you were to be asked about it or run to a teacher or principal or superintendent and, and kind of get you know their feel from it, what kind of vibe, and then uh, if you can send me out into the community to find others. That's what I'm looking for. So it's going to happen without our oh it's happening oh it's yes happening. sir <laughs> it is happening all right that's right and once we take schools in and systems in i mean we don't not come back i mean we're going to be here for the long haul because like i said we we have um state sponsorship that yeah. can take care of areas that we can't find any local sponsorships but we usually have a pretty good uh, reception so 
but I'll be glad to speak with anyone or, or I have my card in there with my email. If you know someone that you think I might can reach out to, I'll be glad to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mike, you got no, sir, nothing in particular. Y'all got something. I got something I need you to look at after the meeting, but that's all. Right. Well, that's everything on the agenda for today. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com backslash 49 County News TV.